One of the most important things that we do in instructor training for I2 is debugging. As a teacher of scratch game design, you are going to spend most of your time debugging, especially after the first day. When students raise their hand with questions, more often than not, they have a problem with their code, they can't find the problem, so it's very important for me to enable you to be able to help them. That doesn't mean that you need to know every single block or that you need to know all the ins and outs of programming. I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks that will hopefully allow you to quickly troubleshoot any student project. Students are also going to be doing their own debugging as they go along, and there are a few specific debugging activities built into the curriculum. As you'll see here, I have a link to a Scratch Studio. This studio contains all the starter projects and will also have a few debugging challenges for you where you can see the broken project, fix it, and then I have an example of the project fixed just in case there's a bug that you can't find on your own. Very important that you try and debug this project on your own, so I'm going to ask you at a certain point to pause once it's been opened and remixed so that you can do the debugging on your own. Hopefully you can find all the problems, but the code is here just in case you have trouble, and that way I can show you the tricks that I showed in training. So in Google Chrome, please go to scratch.mit.edu studios slash 2027194. You'll see I have some of the starter projects here, and two of them are identical. One is called Debug Simple Maze Game, and the other one is Debug Simple Maze Game Fixed. So I'm going to click on the first one, which should be, oh no, the first one is fixed, so I'll need to go back. Don't want you to sneak in that code. So we'll go into Debug Simple Maze Game. As it says here, this is a broken maze game. I have the instructions, click the See Inside button and debug the game. So click See Inside. What you should do is remix it, otherwise you won't be able to save the changes. So you can do File, Save as a Copy, that's the same as remixing someone else's project. So I'm going to save a copy and it'll have copy here. For yours, you should probably type fixed. So you can keep track and know that this is the one that you fixed yourself in case you want to share the broken one with your students. I'm just going to put remix on mine so I can keep track. So at this point, please pause the video Go ahead and try to debug it on your own and find the errors that I've introduced in the code. One thing that's very handy that I tell teachers about pretty early in training, so you have the advantage here because I'm reminding you before you do it, watch what happens if I hold the shift key and click on the gray part of the stage. See, I have the option to clean up code. I'm not going to do that yet because that might reveal one of the problems that I want you to find on your own. But shift or right clicking and using cleanup can be a big help if you're dealing with student code. But please, before you do that, point out to the student, wow, your code, it's really hard for me to read. Um, do you mind if I clean it up? and you can show them exactly what you're about to do before you do it. Just in case they've arranged their code in a specific way might be helpful. So please pause the video now and then come back if you want to see me go through each of the steps. Hopefully you found the errors on your own, but I'm going to go through my workflow since this is something that I do in the training just so you can see what I would do to try to identify the problems in the script. The first thing I might do is scan through the script quickly just in case I spot something right away and in particular if I know that the problem is with this one sprite then that's probably a good idea to check really quick. So if I visually scan mm, let's see well I notice a few things that are wrong. So let's click the green flag first 
Did you notice the cat automatically flipped before I had pressed any of the arrow keys? I'll do it again. I click the green flag and it flips. So I'll click stop. So that means somewhere there's something going on with the direction that it's facing. Hmm. Weird, but I'm not seeing anything here that would specifically do that. So maybe I should take my own advice, shift click on the gray part of the script area and do cleanup. Oh, look what happened. There's an extra, do you see this here? It's an extra when green flag clicked forever turn one degree. So it means that it's gradually actually turning and changing the direction that's causing it to flip. So watch, this was hidden behind other code. This can happen pretty frequently. Often it will be the code that's in the top left hand corner. Sometimes because students have dragged their code between one sprite and another to copy it and not recognize that in fact it's blocked other code that's there. This happens all the time, so I really wanted to make sure that you know about this, that there might be code hidden by other code. So if all other things run out, you can use that. Oops. Let's see if we put this back here. Clean up. I also left it, when I arranged it originally, I kind of lined up the blocks. Usually you can kind of see, see how there's a little, you can see just a tiny bit. Your eyes will eventually become trained to catch these little things, but doing that cleanup is going to eliminate that problem right away. So to delete that extra code, I can just click and drag it back into the drawer. Now for the other problems, I'm going to have to actually, let's see, let's move this code back in so you can see it. And scroll over and grab the code here and I want to zoom in hopefully that'll help you read the blocks better I want to go through each of these scripts so with the green arrow um, green flag clicked now that flip problem is gone now I'm moving on my own but if I touch the up arrow key, the cat is actually moving down. So there's clearly a problem with the script tied to up arrow key. Point in direction, hmm, look. It was set to point down instead of up when the up arrow key was pressed. So I'm going to change that back to up. Now when I press the up arrow key, it should work fine. Ooh, but I press the down arrow key and the cat is moving up. So let's check the down arrow now. When down arrow key pressed, point in direction, okay, it is pointing in the right direction, which is down, but what else do you see there? Look, it's moving negative 10 steps instead of moving 10 steps. So, need to fix that. Now, when I move down, let's click the green arrow. If I move down, it should work properly. What if I move right? Ooh, look, do you see what it did? It actually is all confused. It's going right through the wall, not pointing the right way. So there's definitely something wrong with right arrow key as well. So I'm gonna scroll over there. When right arrow key pressed, it is set to move in direction right and move 10 steps. But look, instead of moving 10 steps back when it touches the wall, remember it. you wanna um, use code to turn around and move back in the other direction of touching the wall. It's moving one step instead of ten. That's something I might have caught just when I was looking at the code at the beginning. But I'll fix that, click the green flag, and now when I move right, it should work. If it gets to the wall. But my left arrow is still not working. So let's check that final script here for left arrow. When left arrow key pressed, we do want it to set rotation style to left to right because that's preventing it from the cat kind of moving on its head, flipped over. Point in direction, for left, we do want it to go negative 90, and we want it to move 10 steps. So something must be wrong here. Ah, look. If touching the wall, then it's moving 10 more steps into the wall instead of turning and then moving. 
you want to turn and then move 10 steps. So now right, left, that fixed it. So I, the teacher, introduced a problem in each of the scripts to check. Now it should be able to navigate the simple maze, no problem. I think it's important the first time that you're intentionally doing debugging that you either give your students a very simple project to debug, as I have here, just one sprite, a background, and some scripts, or have them debug their own game. So as I point out in the teacher guide, it might be a good idea towards the end of the first day at a break, you can have them open up their scroller game, you could break the game, but if you do that you want to do a save as to make a copy just like we did here. You don't want to break their game and then have something go wrong. You want them to be able to revert back to their original game. So if you're breaking their game, then you could try just making a few changes, as I have. And it might even be fun to hide one of the script blocks, as I did. Though I think by the second day they should be starting to notice that on their own. And there is one other specific debugging activity that I find really good, which is having students break each other's games. Again, want to make sure that the game is copied before that's done. Great. Hopefully you've had a little bit of fun debugging. I want to make sure that you also, let's see if we go back, just want to make sure that I'm going back to the studio page just so I can point out that this is a good place to also share projects with students. So having your own studio for your course so that you could have, um, if it's one project you want them to debug as I have here, it's a good way to share it. That way they can just type in the quick URL and get there on their own. Cool.